I know you mentioned that Chivo has uh, problems and I've heard that it has like liquidity issues and, and stuff as well. Um, does the average Salvadorian, are they aware of the Bitcoin Beach wallet? And do they see it as like an alternative, like a, maybe a more positive alternative to Chivo? No, most of them, they don't know, unfortunately. Uh, the, most of them, that's my opinion, um, heard the word Bitcoin when the Chivo app was launched. So they have zero clue that there are other wallets, uh, not only the Bitcoin Beach wallet, other wallets. Um, for them, Chivo is the digital app to make payments. And that's important because uh, for what, from what I've learned, they basically use Chivo as we use PayPal or just another digital system. They are not even that much aware they can pay dollars in dollars and in Bitcoin via the app, you know? When I tell them, listen, uh, because doing what they do, I have to ask first. So when I have to find a, a, a hotel, I have to call them all just to ask them in advance if they accept Bitcoin because I want to pay in Bitcoin. Or when I enter a restaurant, first question is, hola chicos, accept them Bitcoin? And then they answer and they tell me, yes, we do. No, we don't. So when you, get, when you get to pay, what they do is showing you a QR code to pay with dollars because that's what they do between Salvadorians. They use the Chivo app to exchange dollars. They, they don't even know there is another QR code in there that it's the Bitcoin QR code. And they absolutely have no idea you can generate a lightning network uh, invoice because they have no clue of, of, of Bitcoin. <laughs> Nobody knows what the, what the lightning network is. So uh, really there is a total lack of education. And the Bitcoin Beach um, wallet is very popular here in this area. A couple of times I, um, I've seen it used outside the area. Um, but to be honest with you, uh, I, 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 I'm a big fan of the Bitcoin Beach experiment. For sure, it was important for El Zonte. They made something super special in here and it, they're still doing it. But I don't know, man. Sometimes uh, I wonder why the Bitcoin Beach wallet has to be another custodial uh, 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 custodial wallet. You know, they have this uh, weird, they call it community custodial, but all in all, you know, the Bitcoin Beach wallet doesn't give you your uh, private keys. And to me, I might be old school, but that's the whole point of having Bitcoin, owning your private keys so um and there is this attitude you know also here at the bitcoin beach salvadorians are not ready to hold properly on their keys why because they're dumb they, they live in a cash society so everyone that lives in uh, el salvador has a hole where they hide 100 bucks 150 bucks so are you trying to tell me they're not going to be able to hide and hold on a little bit of piece of paper with 12 or 24 words uh, on it i don't believe that so there is this approach of that wallet that I don't really like. And even here in the Bitcoin Beach, I find that there is a huge lack of education. Um, and the Bitcoin Beach has been working for three, for three years, properly economically funded in this area. And it's a very small community. It's 3,000 people. So what happened? Some, something, something was wrong here. If you travel to El Tunco, which is basically the beach beside, nobody accepts Bitcoin there.
nobody. I mean, maybe three shops in town. So it's slow, guys. I know we want this thing to happen tomorrow, but it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to take years in El Salvador as well. Something that's kind of interesting to me, actually, that you mentioned in the very beginning, um, and it kind of ties into a lot of what you're mentioning now, from what I can see, uh, would be that you you said, obviously, that you, and, I, and I looked this up anyway beforehand, I was, I was stalking you before the podcast um, to find out more information that I could ask you about. And uh, it, obviously, you said you worked in the medical marijuana field. Um, sure, I'm making the assumption here that surely there's quite a lot of comparisons between the two fields when you're working in it right like i i was going to ask you like how because obviously you're saying there's obviously a problem with the education and people not being aware of things and and like how you know different certain words like lightning or how to use it surely this is somewhat similar to the fight of medical marijuana right like people not being aware of the actual health risks or benefits and all these things uh, i guess like are there any kind of other similarities that you can see or, or like very stark differences and that you've experienced in in working in both of the medical marijuana and the um, uh, cryptocurrency Bitcoin sphere? Oh, yeah, so many. Um, first of all, Lawrence, let me point this out. Not only medical marijuana, specifically recreational, because the field I work uh, is total anti-prohibitionism. All drugs should be legalized and regulated. Cocaine and heroin first. This is obviously my opinion and my field. So there are so many similarities. I actually have a, two podcasts in Italy. My main one, that it's the Bitcoin Ital Italia podcast. But I have a podcast on drugs as well. We do harm reduction and we teach people how to take drugs, minim minimizing the risks in their consumption while they use because nobody tell them so once again there is a big lack of education and the main similarity i find and the reason why i'm doing these things both and there is a fine line between them is that we are talking about freedom and independence you know it should be a choice everything on this world should be a free choice especially when what i am choosing doesn't harm anyone else on this planet if i choose to consume to smoke pot i'm not making anything worse than when i choose freely and i'm allowed to do that to have a beer or to have a vodka tonic it's my choice it's my free choice bitcoin it's a is is the free choice to opt out from the traditional economic system and this should be a human right i should be able to decide for myself what system i use to store and exchange my value so it's a matter of freedom freedom of choice i had a follow-up question to lawrence's question it's a two-part question did you encounter um cannabis businesses in the u.s like not having access to financial infrastructure. Um, I know there's been like uh, in states like Colorado where they legalized marijuana, um, the businesses were denied banking services and some of them have actually implemented Bitcoin as a solution. And then also is what's Italy's attitude towards drug prohibition? I know in Portugal and Holland and other countries in Europe, there's kind of been this decriminalization and regulation. Is Italy like that or is it still kind of like dark ages prohibition? Um, um, I worked in the cannabis industry um, 2013, 14, 15, 16. So it's been a while now that I'm not in the US anymore. And I was working specifically in Oregon and Southern Oregon. Um, and uh, uh, to be honest with you, uh, Oregon has a huge tradition with, with cannabis. Actually, they, they were the first US 
state to have a medical marijuana program. So uh, back in the days, uh, it was already a very established business with the proper dispensaries and everything. And I've never heard of uh, uh, people having uh, uh, problems with banks uh, having uh, financial aid to start their business. But as you mentioned, I know in Colorado it happened. And I know there are several cryptocurrency coin, canna coin that are supposed to be made to, um, to help who want to start a cannabis related business to get money. I'm not really a big altcoin fan to be honest with you so i'm not uh, i don't think that that's the right approach um italy's dark age prohibition at the moment um and that's a big huge issue finally thank god we've been we've been working hard last year to to collect 500,000 uh, citizen signature, we're going to vote, we're going to have people vote on a project to uh, decriminalize uh, uh, possession of marijuana and also personal use. I don't know how it's going to go. I'm going to tell you guys uh, at the end of the spring because Italy is also a very conservative country as as all Europe actually is. Um, Germany is about to work on a law that is going to legalize marijuana. So the wind is kind of changing in the old Europe too. I'm very positive. It's going to take us probably years, um, but it's going to happen. At the moment, though, um marijuana possess and consumption in Italy is strictly strictly illegal prohibited and that's actually the main reason why our jails are packed with people 70 percent of uh, who's in jail in Italy is in jail for small non-violent pot related crimes and that's idiotic I, I completely uh, understand your point of view there. Seventy uh, percent seems like a pretty large uh, number. I mean, I guess um, I'm not going to drag too far from the, uh, the topic, but I uh, what you said earlier about uh, education, and again, this was obviously regarding marijuana, drugs, Bitcoin, etc. But um, there's, cl there's clearly this lack of education in El Salvador, which is uh, on Bitcoin. Sorry, I should say, which is understandable because it the law is. I mean when we talk about global politics and laws and it's very 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 new um and before that not really a huge effort was put in to actually educate people it was more just a bitcoin beach project a few community projects and then just boof, this law appears um so there's obviously this issue there i suppose uh, in in italy i'm interested because i don't know a huge amount about the bitcoin scene in italy um probably less than than el salvador since i at least visited el salvador as someone who's you know interested in, in bitcoin um in italy what's the what's the resources like because obviously you've got your podcast i'm sure some other podcasts have popped up um i'm sure there's a youtuber or something but what what is it like when it comes to content like books and translations into italian and websites and things like that how far along is that when it comes to sort of educating people speaking the italian language on on bitcoin Oh, there's a lot of stuff at the moment. Thank God the situation changed a lot in the past four years. Of course, we have all the classic books available in Italian as well. Bitcoin Standard, uh, the Internet of Money, uh, those Bibles <laughs> are available in Italian all over the place. And there is a pretty active scene uh, a lot of YouTube uh, po uh, influencer, uh, some good podcast, uh, um, a lot of small business, uh, local exchanges are working as well. Unfortunately, uh, most of the contents you can find in Italian are uh, investment related. I'm going to make you rich by Shiba Inu, by whatever you call it, I 
don't want to even mention those. And that's the approach. That's the pop approach. And I think it's kind of the same everywhere in the first world. You know, we are into Bitcoin as an asset. Uh, as I said, to me, there's so much more in there. So I try to do things differently and to bring on the table a different perspective and a different approach to this technology. I'm the, mainly the only one that, that uh, is doing it. Um, there are some very good uh, um, technical expert. Uh, first of all, my good friend Giacomo Zucco, that is probably the only Italian superstar in, uh, in the Bitcoin community. And that, that is pretty much all. There is a lot of guys that are making shitload of views with videos on what you should buy uh, to get rich quick, which is not really something I like, but that's freedom. You know, Satoshi Nakamoto gave us this tool and it comes with no instructions. So everyone is free to use it the way he likes it and the way he loves it. That's fair enough. And I, I think also the, the other thing to consider that's a positive is that often when people discover these, I, I think a lot of people do get into Bitcoin and, and, and things like that from actually like, oh, I want to make some money. And then it's it then cascades into it once you find out more about it and you understand it. So there's always that positive that that content does lead people down the right path as well sometimes. Um, it's, the, it's the case for me. I mean, I, I only cared about the money for in 2018. And then uh, obviously, you know, it goes from there. Okay.